Hello everyone, welcome to this quick video on big data and Hadoop. In this session, we are going to cover what is big data. We'll understand what are the challenges in analyzing big data. Not just what is big data, what are the tools, but what, is the, what are the underlying challenges in analyzing big data today. We'll also understand, uh, uh, get an overview of HDFS and MapReduce, right? Which are the two main components of Hadoop and going forward we will also understand how does the hadoop and its ecosystem tools work together in analyzing big data okay so let's understand what is unstructured data and what is actually big data now in this foil what you can see is some data right i mean a huge amount of data getting generated from a cross country flight right so in 365 days now if you look at this right you it's you can't just tell me how much is this actual amount of data it is around 2.5 billion terabytes of data right now what why does this qualify as big data one since this data is huge right two it is getting generated at a very fast speed three it comes from various different variety of data it has various varieties of data this is and largely unstructured data right and then i mean there are there is a huge amount of data which is getting generated so this this is a typical uh, example of big data right so where uh, now if coming to the formal de definition of big data ibm has defined big data in <clears throat> based on these following four, four parameters right one is volume volume means that if the data is huge not just in uh, gbs or uh, mbs but in terabytes right terabytes and petabytes and exab exabytes of data that's that's is one of the parameter of under the qualifying some data as big data then the velocity right so the velocity means that the speed at which the data is coming into uh, your system right if it is a streaming data huge amount of data coming in uh, all all the time your some examples could be a click stream data coming in the flight data which we saw right or any other sensors which you've deployed uh, where you're collecting data all the time through instrumentation then the third v is about the variety of the data right so variety means that it it is not just one type of data it could be it could be a email data it could be a click stream data it could be a image data it could be video data all sorts of varieties of data is what uh, if if you have this variety of data then then it's called big data then veracity 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 the, the true meaning of veracity means truthfulness now there is a lot of inconsistency in this data which we get uh, through these uh, i mean if we if we're, if we're trying to capture uh, data from various sensors there's a good chance that there'll be a lot of anomalies in this data there'll be a lot of incompleteness in this data ambiguities in this data so you'll have to first uh, look at those anomalies remove those anomalies before going to the uh, final picture uh, before going to the final analysis of that data right so these are the four v's uh, if a data qualifies all these four v's then it's called big data Okay, now that we've seen so many use cases of big data, right? We've seen so many use cases of big data where people are trying to analyze that data. Now let's try to understand what is the challenge in analyzing this data, right? Now uh, we know that uh, the memory storage has gone very, very cheap, right? So, so storing terabytes or exabytes of data is not a challenge. The processing power has gone up like anything has become very very cheap you in your uh, in your mobile itself you have uh, quad core processors these days so what is the challenge right so what has what is the problem which is uh, which uh, the industry faces in analyzing this data so let's take this example and understand what is the real challenge right now on the left side we have this uh, a single machine or which of with four io channels and each channel is 100 mb per second right which means you can transfer data at the rate of 100 mb per second through this machine right uh, through four channels you can transfer 400 mb per second so if i have to read say one terabyte of data just one terabyte of data it, will, it is going to take how much time it's going to take almost like 43 minutes to read one terabyte of data and think of companies where they they collect say uh, thousands of tvs of data per day and they have to read it again and again right so it's almost impossible to read this data now uh, so the challenge is not on the storage the challenge is not on the processing the challenge is on io which is data transfer right so that's the that's the bigger challenge now to to make it very simple if if i have taken say instead of storing this data in a single machine if i would have distributed this data on say 10 machines with the same uh, amount of io and same uh, amount of channels right this would have become 4.3 minutes so one solution to this very apparent is how to store this data 
across a distributed uh, system across distributed storage devices right and then analyze this data right so, so very clearly the challenge of io can be uh, mitigated by distributing this data let's try to understand how does hadoop work right so instead of storing your data in a single location what we do here is that we have a cluster right so you have you store data at multiple so these are all your data nodes right these are all your data nodes let me call them dn and then you have a master node which is your name node right now the name node stores all the metadata so data about data which is metadata is stored here where are the direct what is the how is the directory structure organized which data is stored where is all stored in the name node and these data nodes actually store the actual data so the actual data resides here now if i have to move data right what i'll do is that say say if i have a client which is actually supposed to move data into this data node the first thing it will to go and do is that it will go to this name node tell it that i want to write some data right and the name node will respond back by telling the location where i should write now so these machines right these data nodes are uh, just commodity hardware commodity hardware means these are not really very high quality machines and they're susceptible to susceptible to failure so what we do here is that instead of storing this data at only one location we use data replication so we use data replication now what this means is that uh, instead of storing data at one place we store it at three places that is the default replication factor so when when uh, the client so this is the client which uh, asks the name node i want to store this data name node responds back by saying that okay this is where you should store the data the client writes it to the first data node okay at this location and from here this guy will go and write into this location this guy will write into the next location and these are these were the say these were the three data nodes which the name node identified as the right data and this data node will give a response back this will give a response back and finally the client will get a response back which will be responded back to the name node where i will figure out where which will know that okay the data has been written at this place so this is how the data is written and similarly the data is read from this in parallel so this is how the hadoop cluster looks like and this is called the hadoop distributed file system or the hdfs now this is one of the major components of the hadoop ecosystem this is the storage mechanism of hadoop okay okay now that we understand the how does the data getting get stored in hdfs let's try to understand the second uh, main core component of uh, hadoop which is the pro processing framework which is the map reduce framework okay so before getting to map reduce let's let me take an example right let me take an example and show you how does this really work right uh, let's let's assume that we are having a election okay and we have these various nodal centers where people go and vote okay so you go vote here you go vote here you go vote here and you go vote here and you go vote here okay now one way of calculating the result right is to bring all these votes to a central location you bring all these votes to a central location move all this data to the central location and you process at this central location okay and there you declare the winning candidate okay so what did we what did we do essentially here we the data was all stored here we moved the data to this place okay and then we did the processing this is the traditional way of doing data processing or data analysis right where you have your data stored in various locations and distributed in distributed fashion and then you move this data now what what the challenge with this approach is that you are still moving data and we saw a few minutes back that the challenge was in moving this data around right so instead of instead of moving the data what we do here is that we move a small processing unit here right or a small program here what will this program do it will count the votes here and only transfer the count here okay so only the count or the winner at this location is moved here similarly the count and the winner of this location is moved here the count of this is moved here right let's call these programs m m m and m 
okay so these are the so what we did here is instead of uh, moving the data we moved the program or the processing near to the data and we did a local processing and just moved the count here so essentially we moved very very less data compared to the earlier data which we were moving and here this data all these counts are processed and you declare the winner again so in the previous approach which which we highlighted with green we are moving data here we are not really moving data we are actually moving the program to the place where the data, uh, data resides and we are just moving the outcome of that so this is the map reduce paradigm right so now we've divided our program or processing into multiple processors and moved this data to this unit so these data nodes right now in in the context of the hdfs these data nodes are not just dummy storage devices but they also have some processing power and in this fashion what we've done is we've first distributed the data through hdfs and also distributed the processing through MapReduce. the MapReduce framework takes care of all the uh, things which are required in say synchronizing all these programs working together making sure if there is a failure and rerunning the program anything which you could think of right in parallelization has, is taken care by the MapReduce framework okay okay now that we've understood the fundamentals of hdfs and MapReduce, let's try to understand how does the overall ecosystem of hadoop uh, looks like and how does it work in tandem with the other tools in the ecosystem right to start with let's look at uh, the data movement how do we move this data i showed you a client in the sdfs uh, illustration so for moving data there are largely two ways of moving data one is if we have a structured or un if, we have, if we have unstructured and semi-structured data or a streaming kind of data there is a tool called flume which is used to do this data movement and this tool uh, flume is uh, uh, is used to move in the streaming data now the other tool to move data is called scoop which is nothing but a abbreviation of sql to hadoop where you can move data from any of the structured databases it could be excel it could be your mysql it could be your ms sql it could be oracle so there are connectors available using which you can move data from uh, any of the, the structured databases into the hadoop distributed file system right so this is the hdfs there is a framework for cluster resource management which is called yarn yarn stands for yet another resource negotiator this is the system this is the framework which actually analyzes which actually uh, does all the resource allocation it figures out where where the data resides this is this is uh, this is uh, this is where you figure out if you have to run a program how many parallel instances of program will be run how will be the uh, how will be the mapping of the programs be done how will be the data will be moving across uh, the uh, across the cluster all this is taken care by the yarn and on top of yarn your one of the programming uh, uh, ways on uh, yarn is MapReduce, which we just saw using which you can do your processing so you divide your program in the map reduce paradigm you divide your program in a map program and a reduce program the map program is the one which runs locally where the data resides and the output of that map program uh, i'm talking at a very very high level the output of that map program is uh, uh, of these multiple map programs comes into the reduce program where you get the final output okay now there are other tools as well right uh, in the hadoop ecosystem one of the very important tool right and now map reduce requires programming so one of the very important tool in the hadoop framework is hive hive was developed by facebook and then open sourced what hive does is that instead of writing a java or a python or a ruby program for map reduce what you can do is you can write sql like uh, uh, queries in hive which will be internally converted by hive into map reduce and run on the yeah okay so this is this is the tool which uh, which is called hive and hive has a uh, query language which is called hive query language and you can write sql like queries to uh, do data processing similarly there is there was a tool which was developed by yahoo now this is this is again for people who are doing data analysis for prototyping instead of writing your program in python or java you can write it in a language called pig latin itself so it's a very simple scripting language okay and this can be used for data analysis on top of it for pro people who are not programmers for people who are researchers or data analysts okay 
then there is a tool called uh, mahout mahout is a collection of apis a collection of data collection of algorithms which can be used for typically writing those recommendation engines and it can be it it is it can do web scale machine learning so you just instantiate a mahout program in your MapReduce program and you are ready for it right and then there are other yarn frameworks other than MapReduce, which are called uh, which could be say a storm or a park which can be used for other type of loads other than batch uh, programs which can be done only by MapReduce, right and then you have for workflow management you have a tool called uzi which can which using which you can uh, you can manage all your MapReduce jobs running uh, on your uh, hadoop distributed file system right then there is a NoSQL database uh, in Hadoop, right? Now this NoSQL database is called HBase. This is for online transactions. Okay, so this is this is how your uh, complete ecosystem tools look like. There's few other tools as well, but at a very very high level, these are the tools you need to master if you want to become a big data expert. Hope you enjoyed the session and you understood these facts. Thank you very much.